This is Fred Beck from Fred Joyce Fighting. Today, I'm very lucky to be joined by Demarcus Corey. So, thank you very much for coming on, Demarcus. It's good to see you, mate. Hey, thanks a lot. So, how are things with you, Demarcus? What have you been up to? Uh, staying busy, working, getting ready for this upcoming fight. Yeah, we'll touch on that fight in a bit. But one fight I do want to talk about, which I think is quite interesting, is the fight you had with Floyd Mayover. What can you remember from that night? I remember a whole lot from that night. I mean, the game plan was to keep Floyd exchanging with me, keep him in close fighting. But uh, he's a smart fighter, and he listened to his uncle. After the fourth round, his uncle told him to box me, don't bang with me, because he knew I was very strong inside. And uh, from the fifth round on out, that's what Floyd did. He started boxing. And Floyd said before, you were one of his toughest opponents. What did that kind of mean to you? Because that's quite impressive. Floyd doesn't give compliments out that often. <laughs> I, I appreciate that. Um, he knew he was in a real tough fight that night. And um, if he wouldn't have listened to his uncle, that night would have been short. I would have knocked Floyd out. So if Roger wasn't in his corner then, you would have finished him? I would have finished him, 100%. Because he... Roger, Roger has a different style from Big Floyd. Floyd, Big Floyd, he's like to set in a pocket and, and exchange with you because Big Floyd can punch a little bit. Roger was more the boxer, hit, not get hit. He's still round. And that's the way Floyd was mimicking and learning as his young career. To win the round, you ain't got to knock everybody out. Yeah, especially. I remember, I remember that fight. I watched that fight back on YouTube today. It was quite entertaining. And you also sparred Floyd when Floyd was getting ready for the Manny Pacquiao fight. What was that kind of like? Because considering he's really shared the ring with him before in a more competitive environment. Uh, I worked with Floyd for every southpaw except the, um, the I think it was um, Conor McGregor. But the Manny Pacquiao, we worked together. Sean Bay Mitchell, we worked. And the Zab Judah fight. I mean, he wanted the best work, so he called the best person out there. Of course, and you also worked with Jeff Mayova, uh, Jeff and Roger. Do you ever get? Were you ever a victim of the Doom session then? If you worked with Jeff, <laughs> yes, yeah, Jeff got me a couple of times with the Doom. That's his mimic right there. He take you to the Legion of Doom with the mitts. And considering you worked with both Mayova brothers, what what similarities and what differences do you kind of notice about working with both Roger Mayova and Jeff Mayova? Uh. With Roger, um, we, we built a relationship. He showed me how to work the mitts and um, the pad work, the way he was doing it with Floyd, the numbers, the hit, not get hit, use your shoulder. And then uh, I got with Jeff, and Jeff was doing the same thing, but Jeff just talk a little more and make it more fun. Roger is more serious. Jeff was more fun. You always can get a laugh out of Jeff because you never know when the doom is going to come. Yeah, I've spoken to Jeff on here quite a few times, and Jeff always has a good laugh. And considering, <laughs> yourself, considering yourself at uh, the age of 47, how do you kind of still have the motivation at the age of 47? Because when my dad and me, <laughs> my dad's what, he's 57, and he still says, oh, yeah, Fred, you should be beating me up this hill. You should be way faster than me because you're way younger. How do you still have like the motivation, the energy, and the desire to keep going at such an age? Uh, I, I just took care of my body over the years of boxing, Drinking tastes nasty. Smoking, I ain't trying to get high because I want to continue to perform at the level that these young fighters are performing at. And um, I'm hungry. I still got a taste for another title shot. And I want to get an opportunity to fight for another title. So next week, we'll show the world that age ain't nothing but a number. You can't sleep on a person at 47 years old. Exactly. And do you think that's more important when fighters coming up? Would that be advice that you give to them to look after their bodies more, do you think? Don't drink, don't smoke, and stay out of trouble? Uh, your body is a temple at the end of the day. If you have a Mercedes Benz uh, AMG 650, you shouldn't put cheap gas in your car. You should put the best in your car so it can run correctly. I take care of my body like, like it's a car. I'm not going to put no cheap food in my body. I ain't going to I go to McDonald's, which I do eat McDonald's. I'm getting a sausage egg McMuffin. That's a breakfast sandwich. 
um, when I go out to eat, I'm going to eat some lamb. I want something good. I ain't going to eat no steak because steak take too long to digest in your body. Okay, that's quite interesting. And I'm interesting then. I remember Bill Gates saying that your body, your body's like a car, but this car you've got, the Mercedes or whatever you want to use an example, you've got it for life. So you got to look after it. So if we just try yeah. to fight against a poor Noah Hines, because he's five and one and he's only has six belts, you've got 85 belts. You're incredibly more experienced than him. How do you see this kind of fight playing out? I'm going to predict the fight because I'm running the show. It's how I want it to play out. I can box him for six rounds, play with him, make him miss, or I can apply pressure, and he can apply pressure, pressure bust pipes. His pipe will burst before mine because I can take more pressure than he can. Do you think your in your in ring experience and your IQ will give you a big advantage in it? 100%. Even though he's a younger fighter, he still don't have enough experience to match the abilities that I bring to the ring. I know how to set traps. I know how to bait them in. And this fight is a short fight. It's only six rounds. I wish it was an eight or 10 rounder so I can really take him to school. So due to his only six rounds, I'm gonna have to put pressure on him early. Do you plan on a stoppage at all then? You'll make a statement. That's to go. I got to make a statement if I'm trying to get another title shot at 135 pounds or 140 pounds. And how many, say you win this fight coming up, how many more fights? I'm going to win this fight. <laughs> how many more fights I want to do? I want to top out at 90 professional fights. Okay, so you got about five more then in you. That's it. And how many of those fights do you reckon will take you to get to a title shot? How many more fights, considering you keep... I, 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 I say two to three. This one and two more, or this one and another one. And obviously at 140, that's Josh Taylor, undisputed. And then at 135, you've got Lopez and Haney. Who do you think is kind of the toughest test out of those, those fighters? Uh, let's go 35 first. You got Tank. He the toughest out of all of them. And then Lopez. And then Haney. Yeah, Tank's fighting Rowley, and the press conference is starting, but Tank's not a world champion at 135, though. He was world champion, so he's still world champion. He's going to be world champion again if he decides to fight at 135. Yeah, Tank is one of those exciting fighters. And obviously now you kind of got, you got time and you look back at your boxing career. Do you think there's any, anything you'd, like, you'd have done differently when you look back at it? I would have had a strength and conditioning coach back then. And why? Because they have, a, they, have a lot, they have a lot of mechanics and equipment that they're using now for the young fighters to make them more stronger. How important is that now then, strength and conditioning? So I guess you're a coach now. It's very important because the fighters in this era are growing different from in the 90s and the early 2000s. I'm still a small frame fighter who's been weighing the same weight for the last 25 years. I mean, and my body's not going to to carry that type of weight getting up to 160 pounds and then coming back down to 140. Miguel Cotto used to blow up to 170 pounds and come back down to 140. Exactly. That's very true. Always staying on weight or near fight weight does help. And obviously, it seems you have saying you want to have five more fights and finish off at 90 fights, which is quite incredible, really. Do you have a plan for what you want, you want to do after boxing and get into coaching or anything like that? Yeah, my plan is to work with kids, um, coach young amateurs, helping them develop their skills and get used to talking in front of the camera because one day they may be a star. So that's very important when you get in front of the camera, you're able to articulate and speak. And also it's Chop Chop Kitchen. I love to cook, so I'm working on <laughs> Chop Chop cooking show in the kitchen. Um, working on my own utensils, cooking utensils, pots and pans. Oh, wow, that's interesting. What's your favorite meal to cook them? Uh, I have a lot of favorites, but I love, I haven't had no fried chicken in a minute because there's been a shortage on the chicken, the chicken wings. I love chicken wings. So we're going to try to get some fried chicken today for dinner. I haven't had no fried chicken in a minute, but I love lamb. I love meatloaf. I love turkey wings. 
I love soul food at the end of the day. It's better to eat in than to eat out. Yeah, I see what you mean. It's more, it's more fun if you cook it, I guess. Where are you based in America? Whereabouts are you? Washington, D.C. Washington, right outside of 295, yeah. And your opponent then, Cornell Hines, he's from D.C. as well, isn't he? Correct. So when it takes D.C.? This is my city at the end of the day. He's just an up-and-coming guy who's not ready to take D.C. up underneath their wing and do what he's supposed to do. So I just got to show him, you ain't ready yet. Let the old man still do his thing. Well, I'm sure we'll find out when the my day happens. All right. Thanks so much for your time today, DeMarcus. It's great talking to you. So where can people find you on social media? And where can people, where can people buy tickets to the fight? Uh, D, you can find me Instagram, DeMarcus Corley, 2019. Instagram, Chop Chop Corley. And you can also find me on Instagram underneath my little son, Little Chop. He's on Instagram as well. My Facebook is Demarcus Corley. I'll put the link for your Instagram in the description. Brian, until next time, Demarcus. It's great talking to you. Appreciate it. Thank you.